In the next uh, 10 minutes, um, I will try to explain to you what we did in the roads and highways department in the Ministry of Energy and Infrastructure in UAE. I would like to make a quick overview of what the ministry is. We are talking about federal highways in the Northern Emirates. And that means any road with this logo uh, covering the Emirates of Sharjah, Fujairah, Ras Al Haima, Jman, Um Al uh, We are talking about a network which is highways and freeways. And we are um, a network covering about 1,250 kilometers center lane, which represents approximately 3,000 kilometer lane. The network is important because we cover uh, the needs related to transportation of uh, goods, principally uh, aggregate cement and some goods coming from the ports in the Northern Emirates. Everything comes, or whatever we will speak here, it comes from the implementation of a road asset management system. We've been working from the last 12 years. All these technologies help to have an idea or a, a very accurate idea of what we have, what is the condition of we have, and how we can maintain these assets in good, uh, in good level of service for the users in terms of safety, comfort, and economic perspective, and, and CO2 emissions. Um, I have to say that from the ministry perspective, we have two types of maintenance. One of them is the uh, corrective maintenance, that's something we cannot avoid, accidents, sandstorms, uh, things like this. And uh, we have also the preventive maintenance. So what we are going to see now helps in the two aspects of the, of the, of the maintenance that we are focused on. The first of all is how we implemented LiDAR. This is the way we used to do before. We had a, basically a video inventory into the images uh, based on non-interactive images as well. Um, the, the data process took a long time and uh, we needed to do a construction panoramic analysis for the images in the whole length. Approximately two years and a half back, we started using mobile mapping in the roads. Through this technology, we collect data in a faster way. We are able to create 3D models that I will explain later how we use it now. Uh, we are able to create high-definition maps from that technology and from that data. Uh, also, we create an interactive environment, and we have 360 degrees images, which makes us more easy to perform all the maintenance I spoke before. In the use of the drones, I have to say that uh, we use it in the bridge inspection. I've been done doing bridge inspection for the last 15 years. Um, at the beginning, I, I, didn't, I didn't believe in this, uh, in this technology, but I have to say that from the time I started using it till now, uh, saving on time and resources is really well achieved. We can notice how we can improve in that aspect. We have reliable reports, and from that point, we can create with the LiDAR 3D models to incorporate all the information that we create in these inspections. Also, we are able to uh, do traffic behavior and classification from the use of the drones. Uh, this helps to combine all this information after to create the proper uh, plans for maintenance and operation. We uh, introduced the use of Internet of Things in different aspects. One of them is the bridge inspection. Bridge inspection related to the continuous monitoring of some aspects that are important for us. Uh, in the region, we know that uh, corrosion for, for bridges is a really critical aspect. Our network, um, it has approximately 96% of concrete bridges. That means that in some cases, we need to keep monitoring continuously the properties of the concrete about uh, corrosion factors like chloride contents or pH or uh, even the sulfates in some cases. Some other cases of use of IoT is the image in the right top. We have flood sensors installing some critical points. These flood sensors can send alarms, instant alarms, whenever we want them to send them. For example, we program the sensor to send any alarm to the uh, corresponding maintenance, uh, routine maintenance team. These sensors tell us when the water depth reaches 10 centimeters, so it's much more easy to pump the water here or to evacuate the water uh, rather than, than wait the water's meters high, right? And also we have, in this case, the application of some tools 
that allows us to know the traffic condition instantly in per lane in terms of uh, speed. So speed is important for us from the operational side. That means that we can correlate the information here uh, later on to have also some uh, um, uh, together or joint work with police or some other entities uh, which will speed up the level of service in the road itself instantly. Another aspect in which we implement um, uh, IoT and uh, continuous monitoring is in non-destructive payment testing. We follow some criteria that we need to collect to after be able to process in some uh, artificial intelligence process, which is the collection of IRI, which is a comfort, texture represent uh, safety, rutting, safety and comfort, cracking the condition of the road and deflections, which is the structural capacity. How much will we be able to collect uh, traffic from now in the future? And this all information will help us later to translate all this in maintenance plans. With this testing, we don't have to disrupt the materials. We don't have to, to, to make any destructive tests. We do some to correlate, but generally speaking, in network level, we can collect the data continuously and then process it. Uh, by the way, the image here represents the obtention of IRI using uh, mobile devices, accelerometers. It's not a profilometer class one as the one we see in this picture. It's just a laser device with uh, uh, accelerometers incorporated. <coughs> but at the end of the day, we can correlate information. So using this mobile, we can continually inspect the road and whenever we see some uh, difference in pattern, we, we need to start thinking and acting in a different way. All this information that I spoke before, these technologies, uh, we collect the information separately. Now it's time to bring it together and see what we do with it. With all the information that we are collecting, we uh, perform forecasting for the payment condition. Uh, there are well-known models that we implemented from the beginning of this program of the road asset management system, but these models have been customized till now. So we still need to collect information to see what is the evolution of all these uh, parameters and how our actions affect them and how can we predict some other actions in the future. As well, we can prioritize the risk on the bridge condition. We can obtain from the inspections along with the IoT a condition of the bridge, index it, so we can know where and, where, uh, where and how we need to act and maybe uh, what we can do, we can do cluster of bridges that they have the same problems, or we act in one bridge that has a single specific problem. Uh, we can collect information from the rain. Uh, we can try to predict along with the, 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 the weather information what will be the condition of operational condition of the road. We are not predicting or forecasting weather here. We are forecasting operational conditions in the highways. In this case, this is, the, this is showing the, the forecasting that we do for the pavements. We segment the pavements, we collect all the information, we brought it in models, and then after processing the information, we obtain a plan to maintain every single segment in plans of five years, and every single segment will have a different treatment according with the, the problem we need to tackle. The, the problem tackled usually solve the other ones, and uh, this helps us also to implement in proper way, after uh, five years, some critical technologies related to CO2 emissions, because uh, now we run for sure uh, big rehabilitation projects. Approximately, we did uh, 300 kilometers on uh, inside recycling uh, asphalt, asphalt and pavements, which save a lot of CO2 um, emissions. This is one of the key uh, KPIs uh, strategic for the country. Uh, we are able also to calculate and forecasting chemical conditions of the bridges, corrosion. Uh, we have a specific cases, we can cluster them, and we can represent the condition of all of them uh, according with the information obtained of some. So this is very important because we can make the, the corrective and predictive maintenance plans for the bridges in terms of clustering them, as I mentioned before. With the 3D models, we start using the information to make 3D model with a level of detail 300, and we start implementing all this information inside the model. It, it is true that in the internationally, uh, in the committees that we are participating in the World Road Association and International Road Federation, there is no single still implementation of BIM 
model in one, in one network. But is it true now that we are able to do this in steps? This is what we are doing now. We are implementing this in some of the bridges we have, and all information is collected and introduced in the model. The model gives us all this information. We are able to introduce the parameters inside and the models and get back the information. It's successful until now, so we are pretending to extend this in a network level. We are moving to the autonomous implementation, driving implementation. This is something that we need to cope really intensively with Dubai. Dubai have their own plan, RTA, and uh, we cannot neglect that we are neighbors, so the use, using uh, and uh, having the possibility to obtain 3D modeling, we are able to uh, locate and code the assets in much better way than we did it before, and this will allow us now the possibility to move to the creation of HD maps. These HD maps will be needed for these autonomous vehicles to move, and uh, the next step on this is to implement the use of one real vehicle soon, we hope, next year, in the roads to see what is the level of autonomy that we can reach. We estimate to some, through some uh, modeling and simulations that uh, we are now able to operate level of uh, around 2.53. This is a master thesis. We were cooperating with the University of Sharjah. University of Sharjah in the Civil Engineering Department, we developed uh, through a 3D model and an application of AI, uh, artificial intelligence algorithms, the possibility to detect and evaluate cracks in automatic pattern, uh, cracks with a width of uh, 0. Uh, 0. 0.5 millimeters and, uh, ahead. The classification of the cracks is done based on the um, severity that we assign in the model. And this will allow also to improve the data collection time and the maintenance uh, projects. Uh, this is part of the lecture of the sensors. And this is the one of sight of how we do data collection, pavement, and the surveying, and how we perform the correlation of the curves and the models in the ministry to do the corrective, uh, the pro I'm sorry, the, the predictive pre uh, maintenance plans according with the behavior that we have historically before. In the future, we try to comply with the national agenda. The national agenda tells us that we need, to do the, we need to use all these technologies to improve some of the strategic KPIs. And uh, this is our main aim now. We are moving on that, and we hope to have uh, good uh, outcomes in the next future.